because of that whole project-based learning angle where everybody's not set in a seat anymore. You know, the whole, you know, it's, it's really different. Yeah. Anybody else? All right. I'll go ahead and pipe in. I'm Rob Miller from Magnolia SD. Uh, we have a Google implementation with Chromebooks also. And with me, I've got two people from our team, Jamie Gustin and Tamela Walton on the instructional side. Uh, like Lewis's district, you know, uh, when the Chromebooks came out, uh, you know, we kind of got excited for some of the same reasons. Uh, uh, we've moved away from uh, running many applications on, on computers anymore. And so it looked like a good solution as we move into a more, uh, um, using more cloud-based technologies. Mm -hmm. And with, uh, like a lot of the streets, moving to Google, you know, we, we're getting ready to get first class next week and uh, move to Gmail, and we've been working with uh, mm -hmm. Google Docs uh, for several years now. Uh, so it looked like a good fit. Uh, one of the things that really turned us on to begin with was the amount of class time that we can gain back just because of the speed of turning on. You know. How many of you have those laptops or computers in that classroom? And the kids say, well, we got 40 minutes in this, in, in this period. So as soon as you walk in the door, turn them on and log in. And we'll take roll and do this. And 10 minutes later, you can start working on them, right? That class leaves. Well, you, you know, they got to log out. And the next class goes in. Well, right there, you, sit, you lose a lot of time, instructional time. And with the netbook or, or with the Chromebook, you know, you can leave it closed and say, kids, uh, let's Go ahead and open them up, in 10 seconds they're on. You know, they're logged in and they're on where they need to be. It's really nice. And Google claims that they're cutting that time down. Uh, what we did with our implementation, and we've got a couple hundred of them out there right now, we uh, identified uh, five teachers at two high schools. We've got about 10 teachers involved. We started back in November bringing them in, giving them a Chromebook, getting used to them, and bring them in on a monthly basis for professional development making sure that they really understood how they could use these with their students, talked about uh, different ways to do them instructionally, uh, and then, you know, just the management thing. And so I think with, we've not had the issues uh, like you all have had, and maybe it's because our teachers, hey, those are mine and they're in my classroom and I want them to work. And so they're probably a little more watchful of how kids handle them. I think we had one screen break. We had a couple out of the box that had some issues we had to send back. Uh, but yes, they could probably be a little more durable. Uh, and again, we're really talking about first generation technology here. Uh, Google just recently announced some upgrades that they're doing uh, with some different hardware that's coming out. And I think they're even coming out with uh, uh, a, desktop. a desktop version that's kind of like that, uh, was it the Mac? Oh, Mac yeah, the Mac yeah. thing. And so they're coming out with some different things. Um, so uh, one of the things, if you buy from Google, you know, you get, uh, what they do is when they send them to you, uh, they immediately put the IDs uh, for each one of those uh, into, the, into the settings of your, your admin tool for uh, your, your Google um, stuff. And then you can, you can lock them down if you want with applications and extensions, what they can install in there. But we really have found no need to do that whatsoever. Uh, you know, uh, the kids, uh, you know, Chrome has all those applications that you can install in the Chrome browser. And again, because the application, the, the uh, operating system is Chrome, it's the browser, uh, those applications can go with them, whether it's on a desktop or whether it's on a Chromebook or anytime you uh, log into Chrome. So that part's nice. But they're really not using some mo so much of that. They're just using the Google Docs applications, uh, you know, and going out to the web and doing uh, searching and things like that. So teachers like the speed of use, you know, the ease, and, it, and they're not, it's, there's all this tech stuff doesn't get into the way. And of course, from an IT perspective, hey, we don't have to build an image for that. We don't have to manage an image or deal with any of that. Uh, you know, if there's a hiccup on it, we can, Reset it in what? Just a minute or two? In the, uh, he said about 10, 10 minutes, wipe mm -hmm. it out, and reinstall the operating system. Mm -hmm. One of the other nice things, too, is when there's an update to the Chrome OS, which happens all the time, uh, at boot up, you know, they'll send out uh, uh, some updates, and you barely see them, uh, you know, uh, being upgraded at, as you're using them. So overall, Magnolia SD has had, uh, uh, you know, pretty good success. and. 
Our intent is, is you know, as we get into the BFYOD thing, is look at purchasing more of these to have extras in those classrooms to supplement those kids that can't bring the kind of technology to school. So that's kind of where we are. Hey, Ron, yes, sir. on that pilot, uh, so y'all going to expand that out to your district wide or uh, not at this wide? time? Well, yeah. we've had, and this is kind of interesting. Uh, we've done some things too. Is uh, we've uh, shown all our principals they've used them, and so. You know, they say, oh, I'd like to have some of those on my campus. We've got an elementary spot on, like a whole lab full. You know, so there, this is just kind of happening on the side. And I think the key component, like a lot of technology, is, is making sure when you deliver those to teachers that you give them enough professional development so they'll be successful. Our board members now have one. Yeah, we use them at board. You know, that's what their board's using yeah. at, on our, um, at our board meetings and say. So. Yeah, and training for that, really. We did one one hour session introducing those teachers to the Chromebook, and that's pretty much all the training they needed to start using the Chromebook. The rest that when we were training them through the each month, it was really on the Google Apps each time, and so they didn't need more than than that hour just to get acquainted with it and, and mm -hmm. become proficient with it. So yeah, that actually uh, sounds a lot like us. Uh, my name's. Steve Bell, I'm an application specialist for Spring ISD, and we uh, recently found a need for Chromebooks in our district. And uh, when was it last last year? We actually became a pilot school for the CR48 that Google had out, which is their initial technology to see, you know, how feasible was it? Is there interest? So we, we got about 30 of those, and uh, we ended up with a, a, a teacher that that had them you know, going into the background. Um, we we ended up with a teacher that. Uh, was interested in using them and, and we supplied her with them and, and things have been going great in there. So we decided to uh, you know jump in a little bit more but historically Spring ISD has been a best of breed product uh, district so you know that's your iron ports, your blue coats you know we, we want something that's you know tried and true it's been tested and, you know it's we, we know it's quality but Chromebooks are new you know there's really not a lot of data behind them and you know, so we're we're kind of you know testing the waters here with with the, with the new products. Um, we've been a Google Apps for Education district since November of uh, 2010. Uh, we had uh, a pilot in starting uh, 2011, uh, January 2011, with a one-to-one -one high school. It went great. Now the entire district, uh, faculty, staff, students, everybody is uh, is on Google for mail calendar documents. Uh, so told you about the uh, Chromebook pilot. Uh, her name is Susan Gregor. She's a, she's a social studies teacher at one of our middle schools. And then uh, we got a second Chrome, Chrome card uh, for another one of our middle schools. And this is a pre-AP English teacher with uh, who also teaches world cultures. So, you know, doing a lot of research on these things and they're, and they're, and they're loving it. Uh, so why not tablets? Why didn't we go with tablets to fill this need? Uh, cost. The, the cost of a tablet is already kind of high, and then you have to you have to add the cost of management software, and then you have to you know add the cost of well, what kind of peripherals is it going to need? Is it going to need this? Is it, it going to need a keyboard? Is it going to need a stylus? Is it going to need you know what what else am I going to have to buy with it? Uh, and then you know the, as far as the management goes. If you want to manage the software on a tablet, you got to go with the MDM uh, or something to that effect. If you want to manage the, uh, I guess managing the hardware is kind of kind of hard on that. And then uh, managing the users. So if you have a tablet, if you give a kid an iPad in period one, they use the iPad, they put it back on the shelf, and then the next kid in second period comes in. Well, they've got all that that kid's stuff if it's safe to the to the local tablet. So. There's really no user experience at the device experience. So everybody that uses that device gets the same experience. So we wanted a little bit more, and that's where the Chromebooks come in, because each user logs in and they get their own experience. And uh, you know, they, have, they have their own apps, unless you push down apps to the device, and then it, they have the, uh, the pre-installed apps. And then finally, we can't use gift cards to purchase apps. So our, our, our auditors told us that, you know, that we can't give our employees gift cards to purchase the software for their 
uh, their iPad. So that's another big reason why we can't do iPad for them. No way to purchase. Uh, so compatibility. Uh, another big thing is a lot of educational software runs Flash. So a lot of educational websites require Flash. So that that right there was was a big thing that we needed. Uh, some of some of our I guess instructional applications, our, our web apps actually needed Flash to run, so it kind of pushed us in this direction as well. And then functionality. Uh, tablets just don't have the functionality required by the Teaks. So if you go into the Teaks, you can actually look and see that proper keyboarding techniques such as ergonomically correct hand body position appropriate for kindergarten, uh, whatever that may be. Oh, is required in the teaks, and I didn't even know this until our instructional technologist uh, pointed that out to us. But uh, off the shelf, your tablet isn't going to come with a keyboard, you know. And if it does, it's going to be an on-screen keyboard. And how do you do uh, ergonomically correct hand positioning on a keyboard that's on a touch screen? I mean, is there is there really anything that, that you know is, is going to be a uh, appropriate for a kindergartner, I guess. Um, so then, you, know, you go in and you see navigate systems and applications accessing peripherals, uh, both locally and remotely. You can't plug anything into an iPad, really, so you can't really put a USB drive in there to access a peripheral. Um, you know, just, just little things like that, which in and of itself isn't really a deal killer, because you're going to have your labs and your stuff like that, but if you can get it all in one for a cheaper price or, or about the same price point, then hey, you know, you're, you're, you're getting a more complete product. So that's kind of helped push us in this direction as well. So why the Chromebooks? Well, the cost. I mean, they're, they're fairly inexpensive. I mean, we, you know, it's, it's been reiterated a couple times here. You can get a bunch of them for the price you could get, you know, five laptops. You know, if you, if you ordered Dell laptops, you know, the equivalent price are 10 laptops. You can get 30 Chromebooks. Uh, Google Apps integration, I mean, they are, you know, it's Google from top to bottom. So you log in, you use your Google Apps account, all your user, app, user management is done in Google. So if you've already got an identity management system that's pushing your directory up to Google, you are, you're already set. You've already got the framework to have your users use these things. Uh, you know, the devices are actually managed inside the Google Apps control panel. So when you're setting your email settings and all your, um, you know, creating your OUs for, for users to, to access Google applications, right next to that is your Chromebooks. You click on that, you can, ac you can, you can tell them which, which applications you want them to access on the actual Chromebooks. You can say, hey, we're going to block all the apps so we don't have to worry about them loading. Um, what is it, Angry Birds or, uh, you know, you know uh, my, Mighty Math Hunter or whatever, you know, we're, we're going to block them all and then a teacher's going to request one and then we can push it down. We can allow it or we can just push it down to the device. So there's, there's lots of options when it comes to that. Uh, software updates. We don't have to update any of the software on these devices and it's, and it's not obtrusive. Uh, it does it in the background, you shut it down and it loads back up and you've got the newest OS. That's actually how I found out about the uh, uh, the, the desktop, the Google Chrome mm -hmm. desktop, no longer just being a web browser. It's actually got a desktop now. I shut my shut my Chromebook down one day and came back with a start button. I was like, that's pretty slick. <laughs> so so hardware, um, size, weight, battery, startup speed. You know, you granted, it's not the most rugged laptop. We haven't had any issues with the, with the few that we've had, uh, except for the one where the screen just completely stopped working. We don't know why that happened, but it was a prototype, so we expect it. Um, you know, the teachers love the fact that you close it and open it back up and it's on. I mean, you don't have to wait for, you know, system to resume or this and that. You, you open it back up and it's on. I mean, it's great. The start of speed, less than eight seconds. Hey, you know, I don't think anybody out there can beat that. Um, and then, of course, the compatibility with the Citrix receiver. Citrix receiver uh, is on iPad and Android as well. 
but you don't really get the functionality there. I mean, you, you're, if you're using the Citrix receiver, you're accessing probably a Windows desktop. Windows desktop is made for a mouse and a keyboard to, 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 be, to interact with. Well, if you've got it on this, it's a lot easier to interact with the mouse and the keyboard as opposed to on, you know, on, a, on an iPad, you're going to sit there, you're going to try and try and say, say if you wanted to access a Photoshop app or something that was inside the actual Citrix, the Citrix desktop, it's going to be a little bit more difficult. And minimize complexity. These things are simple. I mean, if you look at them, they don't have any function keys. They've just got pictures. You know, for as, as far as the student's concerned, it's got the bare minimum of what they're actually going to need. You don't have a Windows button to confuse the issue. It's just simple and you know, very, very easy to use. So Susan Gregory, the uh, I'll let you read this, the the, the CR48 pilot teacher, this is um, what she had to say about the Chromebooks after using them for, I believe, almost a semester. So we do have carts of laptops at our, at our campuses that teachers can use and they can shuffle between classes and stuff like that. Well, kids being kids, they do end up popping the keys off and apparently these things, I don't know if they're just the way the keyboard is made, but she hasn't had any keys missing on these things. Um, she, uh, you know, the, the, the ease of logging on and logging off, of course, they just have to remember the one username and password that, you know, is their district username and password. Uh, she did have a couple issues when she was using them that we got on the phone with Google. They were fixed that day or the next. Was, I mean, really, really good experience for her. A uh, couple more quotes. The, the, the laptops have transformed student engagement. I mean, it's just, that in and of itself speaks volumes. It's. Now, I've never been a classroom teacher, uh, you know, but it's just one of those things where uh, I guess I guess it, it, the proof is in the pudding, you know. Is is are they are they actually using it? Are they are they engaged? Uh, now they have a student. Now now they have the students out there going and seeking the, um, the the information and becoming the teachers. You know, they'll depending upon who you talk to, Susan or. Um, Mary Jones, our, our other pilot teacher, these students will find out something on these Chromebooks. And they'll, oh, and they'll tell the person next to them, and, and you know, Mary Jones, she'll go up to the student, well, well what are you doing? Oh, miss, I found this out. Well, okay. She, she, each one of them has a dongle. She'll give them the dongle. They'll go up to the front of the class, and they'll teach the entire class what they found out. And then that way, they're passing on the knowledge. to. So that way, the students are learning from each other at that point, not just the teacher. So it's, so it's pretty, pretty neat to watch. When I visited Mary Jones's uh, uh, class at the end of the school year, it was it was the last, the very last week of school. I think it was like on a Tuesday or a Wednesday. So I know when I was in school, by that point I had already checked out. I mean, I was I was thinking what I was going to be doing, where I was going, you know. Okay, I lied. By Christmas, I was checked out, but by this point, <laughs> I was yeah. really gone. Yeah, I was, I was really gone. So, you know, you know when, we, when we went, she was sitting there, and she, she, you know, she used to be in our structural technology department until the budget cuts put her back in the classroom. So she was an easy, you know, an, an easy target for when we got this Chromebook, said, okay, we're going to give these to you. Do, see what you can do with them. We want to see if, if they'll work in a classroom. And so. Sure enough, when we went down there, she said, if you take these away from me, I'm going to go out and I'm going to buy my own card, no matter how much it costs. And I said, wow, that's, that's crazy. You love them that much? She said, yeah. And I said, well, that's good because i got to take this away from you so the district can have two cards. So <laughs> she didn't appreciate my humor. But no, so, so she, I mean, she absolutely loves these things. And everybody at the campus has, has started to... to fall in behind her and just just kind of kind of really enjoy it because you know they they are they are easy to use and the students it, it does make it easy for the students to uh, uh, 
you know, participate. Share with them about what they did for Mother's Day. Oh, so um, one of the one of the assignments that they did for uh, for Mother's Day was to was they create a web page or create a QR Google Doc? Code. Yeah, create a, a, it was like a Google Doc or a web page, and they had to create a QR code that actually linked to this page. So they would uh, they would send the, send the uh, QR code to their parent. They had to take a picture of it, and then they would see the the Mother's Day card. So this is the type of stuff that they're doing in the classes to engage them and get them thinking about how can I do this and how can I you know use these different aspects to create uh, <coughs> something new. So, so right now we have uh, 60, Chrome, 60 Chromebooks in the district, uh, 30 of the CR48s, and 30 of the Samsung. Right now we have five carts on order. This is out of that IMA funds. Uh, so we just approved five cars to be ordered for, for some of the campuses. And then we have a, this, uh, this Spring High School project a project-based learning startup, they wanted um, they wanted iPads, and so then it came down to uh, our instructional technologist, the the only instructional technologist we have for the district. She she sat down with them and said, "What do you want to do?" Oh, well, we want to do this. We want to do this, and she goes, "Well, you can't do that. You know, you you're gonna need Chromebooks to do that. You might want these, but you're gonna need this." So now we have four carts. We're going to order four additional carts for this project-based learning startup. And uh, the uh, Spring High School debate, or actually one of, one of the high schools for debate um, said, well, okay, we're going to need a few laptops for our debate team. You know, they ended up with a quote from Dell, and it ended up being, uh, you know, it, I mean, it was, it was like $6,000 for just the, the one debate team plus their cameras and this and that and you know these are these are students going to use these to travel with and stuff like that so we said okay we got a little bit more viable option for you here's this and, and to, to keep equity in the district we were able to purchase them for all the campuses for less than what they what the original book was so that's a uh, another <coughs> another testament to their, their cost and uh, Chrome whether it be the, the browser or the, uh, the operating system is, is gaining speed in the industry. So, uh, you know what, I don't, there's no audio on this. So, we won't get to watch this. It's just Hil Hillary Clinton basically announced that at one of her, uh, her uh, public town hall meetings or, or whatever that, um, that Chrome was being pushed out to all the uh, the State Department computers on February 14th as an optional browser um, because Internet Explorer 8 was taking so long for them to test and to certify and to that, that it was it, it wasn't even going to be released till uh, a month after that and that because of the testing and certification process they were going to have to completely skip Internet Explorer 9 and just go straight to 10 at the next version so yeah I mean, raise your hand if you're on Chrome 20. I think everybody is. So, you know, so as long as you, as long as you've turned your computer on in the last few few days, you're probably on Chrome 20. So yeah, that's uh, pretty much it. I mean, anybody anybody have any questions about? It sounded like uh, most of the use so far has been in school and carts, so I don't see it as an issue. You mentioned you have a debate team that would be traveling. What do you have for offline capability? I can see these students, once you leave the building, they would need it, and, and I don't know. What, what, so, is there any offline capability? So as long, as long as you log into the, the, um, the, the Chromebook while you're on a network, it does cache your credentials. So you're able to log into it when you're off the network. Um, recently, I haven't I haven't actually tested this out by going to the web store, but recently Google announced that they do have an offline section for apps. So, I believe one of those is Google Docs. So you should be able to um, locally store your documents and then access those, modify them, and then whenever you get a network connection, you should be able to to shoot them back up to the, the cloud. There's a Node application on there too that you use offline. 
And uh, you can uh, you know, use USB storage if, if the files get too large. It works very easily. Mm -hmm. okay. Part of the reason for the debate team is they used to print off all these materials that they researched. And now they don't have to carry that big old trunk around. They're going to have mm -hmm. You can also save your information to an SD card. It doesn't have to just be a USB. That's true. Yeah, that's good They're amazing devices. The beauty's in the simplicity. Yes. You know, it really is. We'll be buying more. We were all visiting that, that, that sixth grade class the last week of school, and those kids, as Steve said, they were really engaged. They were having fun. Um, I, you know, I asked them, what do y'all like better, Microsoft or Google? Oh, we like Google. This one little boy said, well, I have an Xbox, so I have to say Microsoft. I said, that's okay. That's okay. Just curious, you know. And and they were um, they they were just so focused on what they were doing. Now I, I thought their their writing could have improved. I'm like, you really should spell that da 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 da. You know, they don't spell like they used to, but mm -hmm. they don't seem to care as much. I've heard even in college they don't care as much. But but these kids, they were really enjoying the experience, and mm -hmm. they said this class is so different than what, than when we didn't have these. And we look forward to coming to this class every day. And since she only teaches two classes a day, the other teachers have all been borrowing them. So they have moved around and they've been pretty sturdy for us. So. Well, for us, it's really just, it's not supervision. It's the teachers aren't supervising them. You know, it's a whole another issue. Right. She had them do a QR code also card for to send to a teacher, for Teacher Appreciation Week, to send something. or. I know for the Mother's Day one, one of the girls was Vietnamese, and so when her mother uh, read the QR code, the story from her daughter came up in Vietnamese. So it was really remarkable. So they, so the, the kids loved it. They loved that exercise. It was very in. It was very current. You know, and she got a lot of different things in there. So, so just to just to show you, if you're curious, um, we talked a lot about using the uh, control, the Google Apps uh, admin control panel to manage these. Uh, you can see here you can lock down proxy settings if you don't want students to be able to, to do outside proxies. Um, like, you know, if, uh, if, if you have a, or, or you, if you have a proxy you want them to go through, then you can lock that down as well. So that way, you know, if that's how you do your web filtering or whatnot. Uh, security settings, you can, you can force the screen lock. Browser features. Uh, browser options, you know, you can uh, you can allow them to configure password manager, uh, all, all sorts of, you know, Google Sync, allow users to configure their own Google Sync, and you lock it down. Uh, you can you can force a home page, so if you want them to go to springisd.org whenever they open it up, there you go. You can allow them to configure it. Uh, URL blocking. So say you, you absolutely did not want them to get to Facebook or Twitter or MySpace or whatever, you just put that in here and this thing just will not call it. Uh, extensions, um, you know, it's, it's either a block all or allow all, and then, uh, what do you call it? Then you can go down and add, actually add in individual ones uh, based on, you know, what your teachers need or whatever. Um, Pre-installed apps and extensions. Did I? No, I put in here. Oh, I thought I put in Angry Birds in there as a joke, but <laughs> it's, it's not in there. Uh, you see, so if, if it's it's actually a running joke because Angry Birds is part of our curriculum now, as part of uh, uh, I believe physics. physics. Yeah. So yeah. <laughs> Where was that when I was in school? What are you doing? I was paying attention. Uh, content control. I mean, it's, there's just a lot of I mean, a lot of features that you get by by purchasing them this way with the management fees. Uh, you said that's for the first three years. Do you know what the right. expense will be after that? Well, I believe Google. Um, Five dollars a month is for. Yeah, yeah. Google. A month per year. Or sixty dollars a year. Sixty dollars per year per class. Per class. But of course, like Google, they you know the, the way they're they're marketing. Basically, they expect you to buy new ones after three years. They, the, the, the device life cycle is three years according to Google. 
they're saying that because of the battery, and, you know, aging and this and that, the the device life cycle is going to be three years. They they, they won't um, you know they won't be up to their normal specs, and so that's why they, they put that three year mark on there. But after working longer with school districts, they may start extending that. Mm -hmm. You know, we tried to tell them school districts keep their their hardware a lot longer. And this is new for Google too. You know, they're right. they're definitely listening to their user community. And a lot of the things that you see here that Stephen showing you is it, it keeps maturing and getting better. Recently on their networks, they've added where you can set your Wi-Fi settings and everything. So it pushes that out. And so all that is getting better. Right, so you can go in here and add pre-configured Wi-Fi settings. Um, I wonder if it'll... You know, one of the things I think when I have an uh, administrator says, oh, I got $10,000 to spend, I want to buy some iPads. I said, well, I, let's take a look at Chromebooks first. And I'll tell them for these reasons, you know. what. It's intriguing about iPads is because most people use it for personal reasons, you see, and you, you know, you just really love the tool because it's so cool. But as we know, with the tools that Apple's provided, it makes it very difficult to manage them in a school atmosphere when you get multiples. I mean, uh, we've had several pilots of iPads and iPods out there, and the ones that are successful are the ones where we've got a techie teacher in charge of them, can troubleshoot them. And, do, and take care of all the syncing with iTunes and Apple Configurator and all that. And, we, and the places where you don't have someone that's concerned and able to do that, they crash and burn. These are just simple to manage. There's not much there to deal with. And that is the beauty of it. I know. When I was at the COSIN conference in D.C., um, the Gartner briefing had projection that they said, I think it was by 2015, they predicted iPads would be less than 50% of the market because of the software management issues. So, it, you know, it, mm -hmm. it's just not designed for enterprise use. Plus, Apple says, don't, they, use, they say use them for, educa for education for, um, like, K through 6, but then they say, by the time you get to high school, you really need MacBooks, so it's going to be able to afford that. Correct. Well, they do have the new iBooks author. And so the teachers can make the textbooks with their curriculum, and mm -hmm. it'll it'll shoot to all of their correct. Students. But Adobe has a product that you can use on any device, so you don't have to d buy into just one ecosystem. Because we like things that are device agnostic, and so and the other thing that Apple, our instructional people went to an Apple presentation, and they said for the iBooks that the if you buy one that the authorship, the ownership goes to the student and they expect the schools to, to buy them every year. So. That, that's not gonna sell in the K-12 market. Their uh, textbooks at this time. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And then the other thing too is, I don't know if you all have, you know, we're doing a lot of online testing and we're hoping that somehow uh, we'll be either, either through uh, uh, you know, our VDI project or something that we'll be able to use these next year for online testing. And these do work very well with Citrix. Yeah, we were very pleased about that. Our, our, actually, the consultants that we worked with helped us put in Citrix. They checked it out. They like it. They said that it worked. Marianne, are you going to test the online state testing on that? <laughs> Anybody? Somebody? Anybody? <laughs> what we hope to before next go around, somehow we'll get that tested. Yeah. The whole testing thing is just what, do you have to, what, what are you going to test it for? What, what part do you have to test? It's just browser based now, isn't it? Pearson? I think if you look at Pearson now, they're not going to support Chrome. Right. So yeah, we've got to give them a different experience, and, you know, and we'll have to do that virtually. We now, hopefully that will change and that will mature because, you know, Internet Explorer is, is not right. just the only browser in the world anymore. Well, actually, Chrome is now the number one browser in the world. Uh, Internet Explorer is in the United States, but worldwide, Chrome is now number one. How many do you expect to be deployed over the next several years? Thousands? I'd like that. 
I mean, that's the director of hiring. We're lucky. Our instructional people love them. So. And then do you expect after three years to probably have I'd like to keep everything thousand? at least five years. Mm -hmm. So. Mm -hmm. We hope to get, our district hopes to get to that all our, you know, have enough for all our economically disadvantaged students. Mm -hmm. That's kind of how we're looking at it. I'm kind of thinking that the operating system is so simple that the machines will last and function efficiently mm -hmm. longer mm -hmm. than a Windows machine does just because the Windows operating system is so. So is the yeah. $60 per device option? Yeah, yeah, but you lose them. If, if you don't need the management tools, you know, okay. then you can blow that off. But, but a lot of us went in thinking we wanted that eight hour battery, that eight to 10 hour battery, but I think we're all probably finding that, you know, they go back and get a little bit of charge, you know, in between classes, which, you know, as that battery deteriorates, I think it'll still make it through the day. Yeah. Yeah. And, you know, uh, again, we're just talking first generation devices. Mm -hmm. Well, you know, like anything, probably the hardware is going to improve, mm -hmm. uh, you know, where it becomes, uh, more durable in a K-12 market. And the other issue, kind of like, uh, you know, your your uh, iOS devices, uh, you know, we can't take and replace the battery as they are right now. You know, it's integrated into the whole thing. I expect you to replace the whole device when the battery goes. But the batteries on the Chromebooks, I will say, even when they get low on battery and you plug them into charge, they charge That's like quick. that. They, they're very quick to recharge. And it's like half the time than a normal laptop would And I'm thinking, correct me if I'm wrong, but I'm thinking they only have a one-year warranty, but it's three-year management, right? Yeah. Right, right now. So I haven't heard any information on how you buy years two and three on that warranty. I don't even know that they're making it. Not, right now, there's not an option. For right. you. Yeah. And you see being able to run without the management tools? Well, we're kind of, I mean, there's some, we're not locking down any of the apps right now. Yeah. One day we may see that there's a reason to do that. Uh, but some of the things that they're coming out with, like pushing out all your Wi-Fi settings, that's something else you don't have to do manual. You see, mm -hmm. so there's some advantages to that. But before they extended that management to three years, they covered it. When we first bought it, it was just one year. A lot of schools in other parts of the country were talking about after one year, if they can't get a price structure that's agreeable, that's palatable. You know, they're just going to go in the wild and just use them as is without the management. Um, so that's a strategy that you can always look at. But I think now that they've included that in three years, I think you're going to get so used to having that management console and you're going to want to keep it around. Here in Texas, SHI is trying to negotiate to sell the management piece. Yeah. So. Mm -hmm. The other thing that we're going to do is we're going to take a look at those Chrome boxes. And we've mm -hmm. already put thin clients in some of our computer labs where we're a Citrix desktop Zen app. Um, you know, shock, and we're either like streaming an operating system down to a really old device, an old Dell, or we're putting those thin clients in there that basically just boot straight up to our Citrix uh, Windows 7 virtual um, desktop. What we're looking at, if we can take these Chromebooks, put them in the lab, they obviously are going to have Chrome as the operating system on the, on the Chrome box, and the students can actually, anything they need to access via web is going to be right there just within the Chrome box. And then they'll only have to, you know, come out to their and connect to the DEI for any Windows-based mm -hmm. uh, instructional applications. Kind of like the, the the Chromebooks here, but if the way that Citrix licenses the the VDI is concurrent connections. So if you can decrease your concurrent connections, um, uh, then you know you can stretch your license further. I haven't looked at is it is the Chromebox? That's the little box you can hook up two or three. No. Is that the it's Chrome, a that's the Chrome grid. Nice. They, they got a product that they're coming out with that's a little box. They and, already released it. Right. It's like that big. Yeah, it, and you can hook up multiple, you know, like dumb terminals to it. And so you can get Chrome on several using this just one little box. It's more like a computer lab instead of going to laptops. You go with a, more of a desktop scenario. So they're actually looking at that market too, not just the laptop market, Crazy. but also how do we go in and make a, you know, Google and the money, you know, how do we make a whole lab out of this stuff? So there's your Chrome box. Okay. There how many can you hook up? Well, this is just, I thought it's just, just one. one. Yeah, 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 it's, yeah it's, it's just one. one. It's, it's, it's basically like a thing. Mm -hmm. I was thinking they're telling you know, when the Google guy was out visiting, he was saying something about you could hook up a couple to it. I thought, oh, kind of like end computing. Maybe not. It might be round two version or something. Well, I, think, I don't think they were out when he was talking either. <laughs>
You can hook two monitors to it. Got two display ports on it. You can only have a little mouse and keyboard though. Yeah. You know, Some April Fool's joke on yeah. two monitors. Is there any concern on viruses or malicious websites? Reboot? Or, I mean, if, if there was a virus written for it, you know, it's so easy to re-image the thing. You just reset it. And then it goes out and moves back all the settings. That's it. Whenever, whenever a, a, a Chrome OS starts up, it actually has two partitions. It's got, like, its, I guess it's its base partition, which, which holds, like, the, the, the software that doesn't change. And then it has the, the active partition, which you're actually using. That's the OS that you boot into. Whenever it boots up, it actually does a compare, kind of like deep freeze. And, it, and, it, and if a virus does attack that portion of any any of the core files that don't match up, then it ends up um, just wiping your partition. It's called, the, the, it wipes the staple partition. And that's essentially what you do whenever you wipe the device. And by flipping it to developer mode, it'll wipe the staple partition, removes everything off, you flip it back, and then it goes back to factory defaults, essentially. So it checks the factory against the staple, and then if there's any significant changes to the core, it wipes it itself. And you don't, you don't even get affected by the virus. Yeah, for the price, everybody ought to be, you know, dipping their toe in this pond, just how to go somewhere, just to see what how your, how your reactions are. With the Chromebook, does it have AVGN? It's got a 5 gigahertz preview on it also. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And they just came out with a, a new version, the Samsung Series 5 550, which uh, the, the Chromebooks have an atom processor in it. The, the, one, the Series 5, the 550s actually have a, a cell run, I believe. And the reason they do that is for uh, battery consumption. These, the battery on these uh, typically lasts about eight hours. I asked the two teachers that we were piloting them with, and the, those two teachers had no complaints. They said that they just they last all day long. And Mary actually said that one of her teachers um, thought she was charging them by putting them in the cart. And she, <laughs> it's that wireless power. And uh, <laughs> apparently she didn't, so the next day they were only halfway charged, but they still lasted the entire day for instructional mm -hmm. use. So they, the, the batteries do last fairly long. The, uh, the, the 550s, the, the, the new version, uh, they're supposed to be six hours because they do have a, a, a more, the processor is supposed to be two to three times more powerful than the Atom. So. And the ability to close your screen, save power, and then open it and have it on a second. And to reboot, it takes eight seconds, but when you open that lid, it's it's there. Has the Atom Power been any issues or anything you tried to get around? Mm -hmm. so why would they need a more powerful process? <laughs> Not more. Really. Just something different. Marketing, who knows? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it's Intel. Yeah, it's probably a licensing. Yeah. Our users have been comfortable with the speed of the existing, mm -hmm. uh, you know, the first yeah. generation, so. Yeah. Marion, yes, Acer versus Samsung? Um, I don't think we even looked at the Acer. Mm -hmm. We liked the Samsung right yeah. away. It was a smaller screen, wasn't it? Like a 9 inch? Yeah, yeah. I think it was Samsung screen was size. And Samsung, we just thought was. We could feel a difference when you, okay. when you hold the two. You could feel a difference. And uh, we were just more comfortable with the Samsung. I think the keyboard was a little more cramped too mm -hmm. than on the uh, Samsung. Yeah. And yeah. yeah, the battery life, six hours yep. standard mm -hmm. on this is. It's more like working on the netbook. Mm -hmm. so. Thank y'all very much for coming. Mm -hmm. I think everybody should get out their little blue tickets. Thank you. Thank you.